While we've learned about Newton's laws of motion and the different force equations and properties in AP Physics 1, how do we make use of our calculus knowledge to solve force problems? Between AP Physics 1 and C, a lot of the same concepts and rules still hold true when it comes to forces. For example, all the most common types of forces and their equations, which can be seen in my past video, are still vital to remember, and these will act as the building blocks for the force equations and new force types we'll come across in this video. In addition, Newton's laws of motion are still instrumental in the force problem solving process. Recall that Newton's first law states that if the net force on a system is equal to zero, then the system will either remain at rest or continue at a constant velocity, and if the net force is not equal to zero, or the forces are unbalanced, then the system will accelerate. Furthermore, Newton's third law describes interaction force pairs, where they are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and are applied by and on the opposite objects. The main difference when it comes to AP Physics C is how we'll apply and use Newton's second law to solve force problems. While we learn in AP Physics 1 about Newton's second law, or that the net force equals the mass times the acceleration, we can use our calculus definition of acceleration, the derivative of velocity with respect to time, to get our new form of Newton's second law. To explain how to use this new form of Newton's second law, let's try to describe the motion of this tennis ball dropped from the sky, but introducing a new force we haven't come across before, air resistance. Like friction, air resistance is a force that opposes the motion of objects experiencing it, but is related to the velocity of the object. In other words, the faster an object is moving, the more air resistance it feels. While the equation can change depending on what they define it as in the problem, let's take the force of air resistance to be some constant k times the velocity squared. To solve this problem and others, let's follow the same four-step process we learned from AP Physics 1, starting with selecting our system. Here, because we are only concerned with the motion of the tennis ball, let's choose our system to be just the tennis ball and nothing else. Step 2, drawing a free body diagram, isn't hard either. Looking at our ball in the air, the only forces acting on it would be the force of gravity going downwards and our new air resistance force applied against this downward motion. In addition, choosing our axes is straightforward as the motion is strictly vertical. Our final step, solving the force equation, is a bit trickier. Equating the sum of the forces to our new version of Newton's second law, we can see that the resulting product is actually a differential equation. Now, solving these equations won't be too hard. All we need to do is separate the two variables in the derivative, in this case, the v, velocity, and t, time. Getting all of the v's to one side and t's to the other, we can integrate both sides and use our initial condition given in the problem to find our integration constant. The resulting equation when graphed on a velocity as a function of time graph looks something like this. In essence, for objects experiencing air resistance, they accelerate downwards until their velocity is high enough to have an air resistance force that balances the force of gravity. At this point, the object will move at a constant known as terminal velocity. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about solving force problems in AP Physics C.